So guys, I'm gonna get on with this. Uh, this is a oven, flatpot oven smoker that I was planning to make last year. <laughs> These have been in garage. What I have just done quick, or what I've just done, a bit quicker, oh, I've got to take that off again. I didn't put a washer under it. Um, I just made these handles up. I looked at buying some and they were only like 14 francs each for them and most of them weren't as substantial as that and most of them were metal up way so I just made well some wooden dowel I had in a bit of copper tube not copper uh, brass tube and just put some long screws through. I've got to take that off and put a washer on but you could buy angles if you wanted. What I've got I've just been rummaging around to see the stuff for what I have got. This is a little burn tray out of a, a bucket barbecue. And that will go in there. And this is a little stand-up grill. Very cheap. Weber, 50 odd francs, 50 odd bucks for for that. I think that cost about 10 or something like that. Something stupid. And that will go in there. But what I've got to do is drill some holes and put some bolts through just so it sits on them rather than jams in there because I don't want to have to be struggling to pull that out. And that should do that. And I've also got a little one that came out of the same bucket as that base. And what I might end up doing is just wiring that to that because that'll go in there above that what I've got to work out is doing um, air rolls for the bottom that I can cover but I'm thinking I might just actually put this in a stand so that I'll use the bottom and make something that slides across to cover holes and again I've got to make that bigger and again just something to slide across to open it or close it but then if, if, but as I say, if I wired that like that, I could get a chicken under there or whatever, and then whatever on their veg. I might even be able to get hold of another one of them. If I could get hold of another one of them, it'd be handy, because that would still fit in there. I'll drill these, and I'll show you after. So I'll drill these out. I tried first with a masonry drill. I didn't put it on hammer, just on spin. It was very difficult. Of these cheap, these are just a cheap set of ordinary steel drills, and they went through it like butter. So, use an old steel drill for steel, and they drill really well. I've got far more blowout on the back of that one than I did on these two. So, so I've put these nuts in and bolts. Now I would have liked the uh, acorn on the outside, but I went a little bit higher than, well, that drops down to five centimetres. So I went three. And with those head sizes, it could wobble off. So I put the acorns on the other side. Now it can't, but that makes it easy enough to get out. I'll show you what I mean about what I'm gonna do with this. Where did I put it though? So with this, I'm going to allow one hook to hook onto that and then I'll put two wires on that to work like a hinge so that can lift up and I can also lift this off with food on if I needed to put more coal in it or something and that should be quite stable there's a bit of movement there and there, but it won't really make a difference when top goes on. It'll stay on, you know what I mean? It can't fall over. I could even bend it so it doesn't so it doesn't do that. I could make these bottom bends there a little bit more acute so that it brings it in to the size of that, which that's what I'll probably do. Just been rounding my tools up, finding my pliers. After working on that bike, Dylan the destroyer, lift all my tools in garage. Tools what I have in here usually. So what I've done, just wired it with a couple of bits of copper. Uh, I'll just knock them ends over, safe. 
But the reason I've used copper is only other stuff has got galvanised and galvanised and heat it doesn't really go together. It's not nice, it won't be nice on your food anyway. Although I could have just burnt it off. But that'll work like that. And all I did was just nick them. Well, I'll just show you that uh, moped as it goes. Just a quick brief interlude. That's how that turned out. I don't know if you remember how it were. But that's what she looks like now. I had to weld that back end up. And Dylan's been on it. Needs a new, another new light. The second new light. But Dylan's paying for that, not me. But yeah, that's how she turned out. So that's the idea for that. All I've done is put some tape around there and traced it on my marker pen. Pencil didn't work. And then what that'll do is swing round. And then I've got to drill. I'll cut that out first, but I've got to drill some holes. Now I've got this set, this is, I, I bought this to do uh, our downstairs toilet because I had to put up piping in. This is just a really, really cheap, nasty set from um, it's Parkside, so it's little, isn't it? It cost me 14 bucks, but it cuts. Alternatively, I've cut these plant pots before with a jigsaw and a metal blade. That works. Or even just ordinary drill bits. Drill it easy, and you can go nuts if you wanted. If you were to do that, well, you don't have to. You know what I mean? Have this. And this is just a piece of aluminium art, which again you can pick up this sort of stuff in um, big box store in your local hardware. I can buy it here, but I've already got this piece, so why buy it if you've already got it? It's not as straight and flat as I'd like it to be, but it will do. And now I've got something like that. Now what I should have done is made a cardboard template. Because it's not perfect. But, hey, it's good enough for the girls I date. But that's good like that. I'll put a bolt through there. And then that will twist. Opening up. To there, if I wanted to. And what I'll probably do is just put four more holes in this side. I'm going to do the same with bottom, um, but like I say, I'm a, well, I need to make some, some sort of stand for it to bring it up to a reasonable height. And I, I wouldn't mind if I had something on the side, you know, to put stuff on, and, but that would be another story. And that will work like that. Um, what I've also got to put round the rims is some... The uh, fireplace door seal. I'll only get it, there's only enough to go on round one rim, but there's possibly enough just to put a bit of seal on that because obviously there's that dip there. And if I can just put a piece around there, it might help seal it a bit better. And same again for the bottom. I'm gonna have to look at that. So, guys, I've done the uh, opener on the bottom. I've just got on stands at the minute, just off the bottom because of that knot. I've cleaned this rim, dusted it and cleaned it with some acetone because I want to stick this seal on now. And like I said, whatever's left, I'll try and put a better seal on these vents, top and bottom. Uh, bottom one, probably the most important one. So if I've only got enough at bottom one, I'll do bottom one. And then I've got to work out some sort of temporary stand. <laughs> So, and what it'll do, it'll sit on that rim. So it'll probably be some roof lat. I've got a couple of pieces of roof lat. I'll just box it in. <laughs> and I found an old chair that's got no bottom in it, garden chair, which it might just sit on handles of that. And that'll just be a temporary thing until I build some uh, some box section or something. I'll find some. Uh, it's going to be temporary for a year or three, probably. But I want to get a test get it running, see how hot it gets, how long it stays hot. I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna waste any food on it <laughs> today, but I wanna just see what it runs like. Well that stuck better than I thought it would. Um I've tried I've put some on that bottom but I don't think it's gonna do much good. But obviously it, it's gonna get some air in it. It needs some air in it. 
what I've got to work out, I've got uh, a tray, I want to use this as a drip tray and also to stop direct heat. So what I might have to do is put a piece of thread, two pieces of threaded bore all the way through, which I can pull out because I still need to be accessing the um, fire pan. Obviously, I can take that out to add coal, but if I need to, when I need to clean fire pan out, then it needs to be able to be taken out. So I think what I've got to do is put two pieces of threaded rod across. Let's just make sure I get them at the right level. And if you're wondering how I'm doing measuring, I've got my bubbles glasses on. Well, they're not very convenient. Didn't have any threaded bar. I think I found something better. It wants probably sanding off and burning just to get that stuff off. But like I say, it's this has got galvanised on it. So I don't want that in my food. But what I'll do, I'll get a burn off first. And what I'll do is cut, because it's got them torques on as well. I'll cut it in the middle and then just find a height I want for this tray to sit at. And then I can either add water to it it stops direct heat and it'll act as a drip, a drip tray to stop any fats dripping into actual fire and causing black smoke, which I'm not an expert, but probably not as tasty. And that is how that's going to go. And they, these can obviously be removed. And then I can empty ash tray or ash grate. Um, I've also got these oaks. Don't know whether it'll work, but I was thinking maybe we could do some tan tandoori st style stuff by hanging stuff down side, although there's not that much space. So guys, that's that. Very temporary stand. Um, I'm not going to get to burn it today. It's going to rain, I think, in about half an hour. So it seems we're going to have a storm as well tomorrow. So I'll have to do all burn testing and everything at a different time. But I'm quite pleased with how it's turned out. I'll probably end up, like I said, building uh, a base out of box section steel or even um, decking board and stuff like that. And I'd like to, what I'd like to have is a hole for a bowl on one side. So we've got some water. I might, I've got a sinking garage if I can get it out of a piece of marble. Ooh, I've got a piece of marble, like stone work surface. If I can get that to work, that would be quite, quite cool because I could have a sink on one side and a piece of work surface on the other side. But I'll just go through it now. It's done. I did the handles myself. That one's a little bit twisted. Doesn't matter as long as it lifts the top and bottom off, or the top off, not the bottom. The wooden handles helped a lot because, again, I'm assuming that's going to get rather warm. If it's hot enough to cook, it's hot enough to burn your fingers. But yeah, I think it worked out quite well. I probably spent, I don't know, four hours in reality on time doing it and then digging around for stuff, bits and pieces like hardware, which I've got, but some of it's here, some of it's there, some of it's every bloody where. But that's the idea as i say it'd be nice that i can cook here and here as well i've got a thermometer which i bought uh like a meat thermometer i'm going to try and get a, a grill thermometer um but the meat thermometer i bought i bought it from feed store and it cost me 12 francs i was looking at the weber ones in the big box store and they were like 70 or 80 francs so i'm quite say I'm well happy that I got one for what I did. The pots were about 18 francs each, so 36 francs. This we already had, this grill. This grill we already had, and just some nuts and bolts and stuff. I'm really pleased, to be honest. That works like that. And that works like that. So I'll do a burn test and see how long it burns in temperatures and a cook and on another video. And if you like this, give us a thumbs up. Or a thumbs down and uh, drop a comment in. It's nice to be nice. <laughs>